In this segment, we'll discuss fuses, circuit breaker, and status light in the Titan 575. For tools, we'll need an electric volt ohm meter that has the ohm function on it. And there will be no other tools or supplies required. We'll begin by removing the panel on the left side of the machine. This panel is held on with magnets, so it doesn't require any tools to remove it. Next, we'll remove the two wing nuts that hold the cover on the electrical control center. This will provide us access to the interior of the control center. In the upper rear corner, on the outside of the electrical control panel, there is a green status light. This status light indicates whether the diverter valve assembly is in the heat mode or the bypass mode uh, for heating the solution in the machine. The light will be illuminated green when it's in the bypass mode and thus bypassing the engine and blower exhaust away from the heat exchanger. When the light goes out, the blower exhaust and engine exhaust will be going through the heat exchanger, heating the solution. The next component we'll talk about is this gray component at the bottom with the two studs sticking out. This is a 50 amp thermal circuit breaker. It, in the event that it trips, it will automatically reset itself, although the time to reset may vary between 5 and 15 minutes, depending on how severe the uh, the overload that caused it to trip. On the right side, center and upper portion of the electrical control panel, on the outside of the panel, are located two fuse holders. These fuse holders both contain 30 amp automotive style two blade fuses. The upper fuse holder is the main line fuse, which protects all of the electrical components in the entire system. The lower fuse is a 30 amp fuse for the APO system, which your machine may or may not have been supplied with from the factory. To check fuses in the event that you think that they may have blown, we remove the fuse holder by pushing the clip on the outside of the fuse holder out and slide the body of the fuse holder out of the mounting cap. We then grasp the fuse and pull straight out, removing it from the fuse holder. Next, we will take our multimeter, set it on the ohm function, and then prior to using it, we're going to test it to make sure that we have a closed circuit. With this particular meter, it'll give you an audio alarm indicating that it's closed. So now that we know that the multimeter is functioning correctly, we'll take the fuse, we'll apply the probes, one probe to one side of the fuse blade, one probe to the other side of the fuse blade, and you can hear that we get a closed circuit, indicating that this fuse is functioning correctly. Now that we've tested our fuse and know it's good, we will reinstall it back into the base of the fuse holder in the reverse order in which we took it out, pushing it down to make sure that it's fully seated. We'll then take the fuse holder and push it back into the mounting cap until we hear it snap making sure that the gasket at the base of the fuse holder seals tightly into the upper portion of the cap to eliminate any chance of water getting in there and causing corrosion. Since we've completed our inspection, we'll now put the electrical center cover panel back on and re-secure it with the two wing nuts. Again, we don't want to over-tighten these, just snug enough to retain the panel. And finally, we will reinstall the machine side cover using its attached magnets, making sure it's secure. And this concludes fuses, circuit breakers, and status lights on the, on the 575.